Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video, and tonight we're going to be doing budget mono black life gains. So, with the current world health crisis that we're all currently going through, uh, I know that there is a lot of us that are currently at home, uh, either under a uh, you know shelter at home or you know work from home kind of orders, depending on where you live in the world, and we're beginning to see a huge uptick in MTG Arena users logging onto the system and brand new players coming to the game. So I know this because I'm getting a ton of emails. And for me, it's a ton. <laughs> Small YouTuber, I get it. Um, but for me, it's a ton of users that are sending me uh, emails asking me about budget decks. Hey, I just started playing the game. I don't really have a ton of wild cards. Can you recommend a deck or two for me to try out that are easy on the wild card, so to speak? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do for the next couple of Fun Deck Fridays. That's what I do every Friday in case you weren't, if in case you're new here. Thank you for those who are subscribed subscribing by the way um so every friday basically we do a fun deck friday and this is going to be what we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks to kind of get those new folks that are to the game that don't really have a ton of time into the game don't really have a ton of you know money to toss into the game and are really playing it from a free to play so what do i define a budget deck is as so for me a budget deck follows into the same category following categories it is a deck that is comprised mostly of commons and uncommons and has no more than four uh, rare and or mythic cards total. So making it super easy on the arena player. Now the interesting thing with a budget build in arena is it's not the same as a budget build in paper uh, because there's such things as jank rares. Uh, those are your 25 cent. Nobody's ever going to really run those kind of rares that you get in paper. Um, and if you really wanted to, you could build a fantastic deck out of a bunch of jank rares for like eight or ten dollars. Um, you can't do that in arena. So uh, the the wild card system is a double edged sword in my opinion, um, where I can get a sixty dollar rare for one wild card. Or I can get a 25 cent rare for one wild card. So budget in arena genuinely means we're going to have a ton of uh, common and uncommon wild cards that we can spend to build these kinds of decks. So let's go ahead into the deck and kind of get an idea what we're going for. So for those of you who are fans of the channel and have been around for a while, you will know that Mono Black is one of my favorite builds. And this one is built solely around the idea of I'm going to gain life and I'm going to do damage to you and I'm going to beat you that way. Pulling in some really, really good cards. This should be a good starting point for a mono black devotion deck, which we can kind of get to at the end and how you kind of potentially move this on. Maybe I'll do that as the next video for next week. So going into Monday, there'll be a re review um, my mono black devotion deck to see what this deck started as to what it uh, evolved into whenever you put some uh, rare wild cards into it. But like even again, I know if you're just starting, don't look at this number and kind of go like, oh my goodness. But as you can tell, I clearly have oodles and oodles of common and uncommon common wild cards that just don't do anything with. They just kind of build up over time. As you, the longer you play this game, the longer you grind out your wins, the, the, the more this is going to happen. The more packs that you open, you're just like commons and uncommons you just don't really spend the wild cards for um, after the first couple of weeks that a set comes out. And you're just going to sit there and build them up. So why not spend them and build a cool deck? Uh, so the main premise behind this deck, of course, is going to be life gain. And again, we're starting off with some key staples in mono and black that you will probably be building towards other decks anyway. Um, the first, of course, is going to be the Cauldron Familiar and the Witch's Oven uh, combo. Uh, Cauldron, uh, Cauldron Familiar 1-1, uh, whenever it comes into play, you gain a life and your opponent loses a life. And then you can sacrifice a food token to return it from the graveyard to play. You match that with the fantastic combo of Witch's Oven, sacrifice a creature, and create a food token. So you sacrifice the kitty cat to the oven, or as a lot of folks like to say, put the kitty in the oven, get a food token that you can then sacrifice to bring the cat back and then just rinse and repeat and keep that process going so you're gonna be doing a lot gaining a lot of life and losing your opponent's gonna be losing our life just on those cards um some of the other things we're gonna put in here we want to really kind of put stop gaps on aggro decks to make sure that if they're gonna be attacking us they're gonna pay for it so i got a couple of good death touchers uh falmer knight's another good one early game it's a 1-1 one -one with death touch which is fantastic one of my favorite abilities on a 1-1 one -one. mid game you can actually lose a life because you're gonna have so much life anyway to draw a card so it does count as a draw a card draw engine for you as well uh, Vampire of the Dire Moon, one of my all-time favorites. It actually does both things that we're kind of hoping for out of a one-drop. It has Death Touch and it has Life Link, so it gains your life and it prevents large creatures from coming in because you're just going to kill them with Death Touch. So that fills out the one drops. Uh, the two drops are relatively easy. Order of Midnight, um, it's going to allow you to bring some of your large uh, creatures from back from the graveyard. We only have a couple. Uh, Gary being the big one, we'll get to him later. 
Um, but the whole basis behind this deck is going to be Mono Black Devotion, which is the more black icons that you actually see on the card, um, the more uh, the stronger Gary becomes at the end. So this is another one with an adventure. You can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, or you can just cast a flying 2-2 two -two, uh, that can't block. But it definitely gets over the top for things. Um, Tyramite chosen of chosen from death is a two zero, but his toughness is equal to his devotion. Your devotion to black. You already start off with two plus all the others that go in there, so he can be a pretty decent blocker. Um, but one of the other uh, ideal <laughs> abilities that he carries, uh, you can exile two cards from an opponent's graveyard for two mana, and you gain one life for each creature uh, exiled this way. This is really good for the people that like to do those, um, especially the ones that are that are coming out of the graveyard. You can just pull them out, like other people's cats, for example. Um, but all of the other ones that go into the um i want to say exhum but they're not they're not exiled it's the one that came with uh, theros it'll come in whenever we see it but long story short that's more of your life gain so gaining life is cool but you want to be able to do something you need a heavy hitter to be able to do something with all the life gain you're doing and in white decks that's like you're a johnny's primate you need something similar to that well we have one of those in mono black and is the bloodthirsty error list which has the exact same abilities that a, uh, a johnny's primate does which is whenever you gain a life put a plus one plus one counter on bloodthirsty error list the difference of course is that it is a two three flyer that can get up and over the top of things um, you're also going to be able to get rid of things off the board. I, one of my tried and trusty staples until I, I did see a good Ikoria card that I think might actually eventually replace my dear old trusted uh, Murder. But Murder is a common card uh, coming out of M20 and it destroys creatures at instant speed. Uh, you also have Drag to the Underworld since you're going to be having a lot of black anyway. This is really most likely going to be a two cost uh, destroy target creatures spell. So that'll get the stuff out of your way. And just out of spite, uh, there's two things that this adds into uh, your devotion to black for one, but it also it's underworld dreams um i'm for those who are not aware i i go back a long long way in magic's history so underworld dreams whenever it came out in legends was one of my favorite cards that came out of legends because back in those days you had things like howling minds and every time people were drawing cards it was doing damage to them and having multiple underworld dreams in play was just amazing i do wish they had gone back with the original artwork i understand why they did for modern times but this card is always going to hold a special place in my heart so i put three of them in there um mostly for the devotion but i also like the idea of just that constant damage that's coming through over time you're just going to ping your opponents to death and of course last but not least gary himself the gray merchant of astopel he is a two four for five um whenever he enters the battlefield each opponent loses x life and you gain x life where x is your devotion to black so he starts off with two so it's a minimum of two but with all of the black that you've got sitting here it's going to be an awful lot more and of course 21 swamps to build out the deck so we're going to go and get some gameplay but while you're here like and subscribe a lot of you have been doing that a lot lately we are super close to my lifetime goal of a thousand subscribers i do appreciate all of those who are doing so um comment in the comments down section down below as well if you have a budget deck or a budget idea of something that you would like to see me play let me know in the comments down below i'll be more than happy to do it because i know again these are strange times we're living in guys <laughs> I, I i i get it um and a lot of us are kind of stuck at home with not much else to do other than play video games and watch YouTube, which is cool um, for those who can still afford to do the things that they need to do, like pay rent and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, if you've got a budget deck idea that you'd like to see, let me know. I do have a, quite a few. I did this whole big run, and I think there, I'll probably leave a link to the playlist in here. Um, way back when the Ravnica, the return to, re return to Ravnica block came out. Ooh. Uh, whenever that block of cards, uh, uh, set of cards came out, I did a whole bunch for the mechanics that were built around the Ravnica guilds um, that are still current right now, relevant in the game as we speak, um, that are great little budget decks. I would definitely lean more towards the uh, the Boros deck. Boros budget is re was really good. I really like that one. Ooh, I feel some ramp coming. And once again, here we go with the life game. Um, I am, I'm obviously not playing this in ranked because this is not nearly good enough to play in ranked. Uh, I don't like the idea of what he's going to be getting at with those. So we're going to murder that little guy. And gain some life. Yeah, that kind of stinks whenever you're... Whole, oh, that's where he's going. See, having all these death touchers down here is going to be amazing. Ooh, should I kill it? No, I think I'm just going to leave it go for now. I think I'm just going to send one of those and see if he's silly enough to block with it. See, this thing's great, except for whenever <laughs> whenever the Vampire of the Dire Moon comes out, and I can, I can just kill it. Like, whatever you put on it, I can kill it. 
sure which one are you gonna kill underworld dreams okay cool you're not gonna swing with that hmm anything in the graveyard no not really Ooh, we're getting ever close ever close yeah, I don't want to sit there and run the risk that he's got something in his hand. Let's just get rid of that now. Sure, he can pull that back out of the graveyard in the next one here, but... Eh. Again, with these Death Touchers sitting here, he's not going to do much of anything. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I get a land here, I've got to get... Six, seven, eight. I've almost... I've got him beat. If I, I just need one land. Sure. I love the build, by the way. I don't want. To, I don't mean to like. I love this build. Ooh, Teferi. What do you return, Teferi? Any one of my Death Touchers? <laughs> sure. Here, have two more. So we're gonna go here and here. And dare you to block. Sure. I'll take both of them. Sure, why not? He can return to fairy. That oh, he's gonna return that. That's cool. It does have lifelink, which is a little bit of a problem. What we need is one more land right now. One more land ends this for us. Ah, uh, alas, not another land. So he is going to be gaining four life off of this one. Six life per. So that is definitely a problem. Let's send all the life death touchers in. Sure. Dream Trawler. I was wondering where he was going with this. Cool. Uh, let's get Dream Trawler out of the way. Thank you very much. We are not going to be dealing with that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, see, the lifelink here is really what's going to kill us in here. I thought we had this. One more land is all we're really waiting on. There we go. And let's hit him with some more Death Touchers. Because I can't imagine he's going to want to let that go through. Sure. So he's going to be gaining five, losing four. Another Gary would be nice. Yeah, we've got to get a murder. We've got to get his lifelink off the board. Ugh. Ooh, ooh, here we go. Where's this been all game? Ugh. Now we're getting more into controlly. Uh, sure. Well, we had a really good start to this one. We just need one removal spell. Interesting he's going to leave Teferi open. Yep, 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 yep. I think we might be in a little bit of trouble. What we need is a witch's oven, or two would be fantastic. Yeah, unfortunately, we are just getting overrun with all of these. This is a cool deck, but again, there's a lot of rares in this deck. Yep, 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 yep. Unfortunately, there is not much we can do about this. Even one at this juncture, even one kill spell doesn't do it for us. We need another. We had him so close. We were one mana away from garying him for the win. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. 
Um, even if we return the creature, which would be Gary, just for the record. Oh no, he killed Gary. Eh, it's not gonna matter. We're gonna go ahead and call it on this one, because I think we genuinely had a chance. And we lost it. This deck just got away from us. Cool deck. It's really good. But again, it's got a ton of rares. And we're playing with all commons and uncommons. So the fact that we even hung in there for as long as we did is really impressive. It's a shame because I think I, it, I wore them up for everyone. So I kind of, like, for whatever reason, whenever you build a deck on Arena, the first couple of games are just awful. Like, you won't see some of your one drops for like three or four games. I don't know if it's a weird algorithm that they've got built into how many times you've actually played games or how often it shuffles up. But like, there were cards I just wasn't seeing and they were all one drops. I'm like, what the heck? Well, there we go. That's a good start. So we will go Vampire of the Dire Moon and say hello. So we have a lot of good pieces here. Let's see where this goes. White, green. Is this the same deck? Are we playing the same deck? No kitty cats. That's interesting to me. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and draw another card. And <laughs> we get another one. No, we're good. We'll just do that again. Yep, we're playing the same deck. We are playing the same deck, or at least the same deck concept, anyway. Sure. All my Death Touch Reachers again. Ooh, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So, let's cast that. Oh, we were looking for the Kitty Cat, actually. And... We're gonna hold... We're gonna let him come on in with his death, with a, with all of his cool things. The trick, of course, is at some point in time he can get that thing up in the air, and that's when it becomes a problem. Single removal spell, though, and we've got oodles of them in there. Sure. That's what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and get that off the board. Ooh, interesting. That's okay. That's actually okay. I thought he was going to pop this to actually give it uh, protection from black, to be honest with you. He can sit there and build that thing all, the way, all he wants. All he needs to do is get it up in the air. That's the catch. Come on. We can do this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and draw a card. Finally. And with two ovens sitting here, we are sitting pretty. Two ovens and two death touchers. Yep, that's where the problem comes in. I don't think these are... Yeah, this is a rare. We couldn't build a budget deck built around this idea. Shame that we're going to have to sit down and build the same, play against the same deck every turn. What we need now is our Bloodthirsty Arrow list. That's what we need. All the glitters. Interesting. That is going to be a problem for all the life gain he's going to be getting out of that. Yeah. Well, imagine that. Green, white enchantment. So the whole <laughs> is going to beat, beat us because we've gotten two games straight with it. I'm not willing to give up yet. I'm not willing to give up just yet.
So we're going to go through and do the individual kitties. Good safety tip. Don't pull the kitty in until your untap phase and you're beginning your turn. So like this one here, I have another one. Because sometimes what people can do is pull off as a kill spell on your cat. And then you're just kind of stuck because you have no food tokens to bring it back. So in this scenario here, I'm going to hold this until my next turn. There we go. So... Now we'll cast this. Get our life gain. Now we'll cast Gary. And get more life gain. It's not going to matter because it's not going to counteract the gigantic amount of life that he's got sitting over there. Because in a moment, he's going to hit us with... 10 life gain, probably more. So all the damage we just did, is all that's doing is just keeping us alive at this juncture. Sure. Why put Sentinel Eyes on there? Doesn't it put... Yeah, I was going to say, it already has... Oh, it gives it Vigilance. That's what it is. Yeah, I think we've seen enough for this same deck. We're just going to call it a good game. If we had our Bloodthirsty Aerialist earlier in the game, especially with the two ovens and the cat, that would have been a different game because we could have potentially outpaced his um, the Archon, potentially. That's a shame. All right, let's get at least one or two more games in with this one. I know that we're sitting at the 20-minute mark, but I'm finding out that people are watching a lot longer now that they're... Uh, Sheltering at home. Okay, where is the cat oven combo? Like, all of my warm-up games, I got those on the same turn. Ooh, a sack deck. This should be interesting. They might be... I, I assume it's a sack deck. I see Rakdos, and I assume uh, Rakdos Sacrifice. That's just kind of where my thought goes. Ooh, he killed my artifact. Look at that. Isn't that special? He's just jealous because he's got one. Elspeth's Nightmare. What the heck kind of deck is this going on? Look at this. This is just straight up control. Yeah, he doesn't like the idea that I can pull stuff out of his graveyard, if you want my honest opinion. Gary, maybe. Drag to the Underworld. I've got enough removal sitting there. Yep. Now the question is, what does he have in his graveyard right now? Not much. That's fine. I actually don't have anything of interest over there. Ritual of Soot. Eh? I'm not willing to cast Gary right now. It seems like a waste. Again, not willing to cast Gary right now. It seems like a waste. So he knew I had that. Like, so why cast it? This should be an interesting one going against control. Oh, cool. Chandra should be fun. She's going to kill my cat, I assume. Sure. That seems like such a waste of Chandra's ability. Just throwing that out there. What this deck needs is an Underworld Dreams. So is he going to just continue to minus her every time to get my creatures off the board? That'll be interesting. It does exile them, though. Prevents them from coming back. So I can see the point to that. Uh, let's turn. What card do we want from the graveyard? Let's pull this back so we can pull his crap back out of the graveyard. Prevent him from getting it. Oh. So this should be fun. Sure. 
Uh, sure. I'm gonna have to deal with that no matter what. So, we're gonna cast this. Uh, for sake of argument, we're going to make sure that Thief of Sanity doesn't return. And all the cards we don't want to see come back. Now, we're going to be stuck with her emblem no matter what. What a warm reception. Is it just me? Or is it getting a little... Yeah, Ritual so sort of felt that one coming, actually. Uh, let's pull those Rituals of Soot back out so he doesn't get to use those ever again in case he's pulling crap out of his graveyard. Um, so I'll do it again and just make sure that they're gone. Because <laughs> I got a distinct feeling he's trying to pull crap out of his graveyard to be able to re recast it. I could be wrong. Yep. Well, what we need here is some... A little bit of something. It's not a lot. Sure. So he has all the removal in the world. So legitimately, I don't know how... Unless we get past... what do we, Anything that'll help here. Cauldron Familiar is not going to really do much. But sure, why not? Yeah, Chandra's just going to sit there and ping off every creature. We're going to go ahead and call this one a good game. Because at this juncture, there's just nothing we can do about this one. So, we'll get one more game. We're at the 27 mark. Normally, I kind of cut it off around 20 minutes, but we'll do one more game. Normally, because I have a tradition on Fun Deck Friday to at least win one game on camera. We've won plenty in warm-ups. But, um... Yeah, no, I just, oh, I feel like we have the, we have this great early game, it's, and if we don't win it in the early game, it's the mid game that's really killing us. Because once those dicks are allowed to ramp up, fine, eh, maybe. This could be okay. I want to get the Death Hunter down first. The card draw would be nice, but... Now that with Bloodthirsty Aerialist in the air, that I like. Hmm. Cool. And I can't imagine he's going to want to attack. Double Underworld Dreams is dirty on these control decks that just constantly draw cards. And I'm not suggest Ooh, this is all oh, this is cool. This is gonna be a surveil deck. So unless he's running counterweight or something like that. Disfigure. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. I should have known better. So that's Underworld Dreams. And swing at him with stuff that he doesn't want to block. Every time you draw a card, my friend. Yeah, we gotta get the Dramir Spy Bug off the board, but at least it's been fun. Disinformation campaign. Hmm. Second Underworld Dreams isn't necessary. As much fun as it's going to be. We'll kill the Dreamer Spy Bug. Interesting. Oh, he's got another spy bug. Of course. Of course he does. 
that's a cool card. I, I again, I do have a video built solely around the surveil mechanic. Whenever Ravnica Allegiance uh, came out, it's a cool card. Cool card. I think it actually builds this whole mechanic. Actually, I'm kind of curious if I'm playing against a very similar deck that I was playing back then. Devourer of Memory. Now that's a cool addition to the deck. I like that. So let's return a creature card from the graveyard. Let's go with Bloodthirsty Aerialist, if you please. And then we'll just put that up in the air just for giggles. But more than one card is put in your developer puts a plus one to intelligent return. Can be and cannot be blocked. Cannot be blocked, that says. Hmm. Hmm. No, we'll hold. What we need is a kitty cat, my friends. One little kitty cat, and our bloodthirsty earless becomes a huge problem for him. Or he's going to do that. I should have known better. He had already pulled that back to his hand. I knew it was there. He's going to read that this can't block, right? Sure. All right. What do we need? Tyrant Scorn, which means he got what better than that? <laughs> there we go. That's what we've been waiting on. And I'm going to assume he's not going to want to kill that. Okay. Now, can we outrun his surveil, Jameer Spybug? One little piece of removal and we've got this. And we've got seven pieces of it sitting in the deck. And we've only used one? Uh, used... Yeah, no, just one. I thought we used a murder, but we did not. Yeah, that's going to be a pain. Not going to lie. I think he's going to outrun us. We need some help here, kids. One Gary. I feel like I said that in the previous <laughs> in the previous game. One Gary. Oh yeah, no, he's got us next turn. We it's Gary or nothing at this juncture. Not a Gary. Not a Gary indeed. So this is going to kick off three surveils and he is going to win this one. So we are going to call good game on this one because there is no way we get through. A Gary would have won it for us though. That would have been so sweet. What a great way to would have been to end that game on that one. So anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, let me know what you thought of the deck and how you would improve it. Keeping in mind that we are trying to keep this as a budget deck. Maybe add a couple of rares. Um, I think the next video we'll do on Monday is going to be a more updated version of what you can do from the beginning place and what cards to add to it. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. And until next time, we shall see you in the arena. This video was brought to you in no small part by our Patreon. If you would like to help out the channel, go to www.patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga. And thank you for your support.